Hello everyone, this is CJ with Cycletron. Well, it's probably a big mistake to replace your lead acid battery with a lithium ion phosphate battery, and I'll tell you why. Uh, last month I bought a new $300 Harley Davidson branded lithium iron phosphate battery from my local Harley service shop, and the battery failed after only one month. So I trailered the bike back to the service department, and after four days of uh, that service department fighting with Harley Corporate, they finally replaced my battery under warranty. Afterwards, several questions occurred to me that made me realize there's a lot to know about lithium batteries, such as how to charge them and take care of them. I also think that most people who have either purchased a lithium uh, motorcycle battery or were considering that possibility don't know enough about what it means to have this kind of battery as a replacement to a lead acid motorcycle battery, uh, if any of my experience is a good indicator. So I'll tell you what I learned, and it was quite a bit of information, so hopefully it'll spare you from making the same mistake that I did, because the whole topic is way more complicated than I would have expected. Right after I got my bike back with the new battery from the service department, I find out that Harley-Davidson had just discontinued this battery. This old battery had a one-year warranty. They're coming out with a new battery uh, that's on pre-order right now that has a five-year warranty. Apparently it's coming from a different manufacturer with a different design. They pulled the old battery from the Harley-Davidson website uh, the day after I posted a negative review of this old battery, which I'm sure was a coincidence since they were planning to phase this battery out unbeknownst to me and, and the dealers. So right before they pulled this battery for sale, I uh, checked on the website and discovered that many people had purchased this uh, previous battery had premature failures and they were very unhappy with the purchase for over half the cases. Now, here are the key takeaway points that I wish I knew before I had gone down the path of buying a lithium motorcycle battery. First of all, lithium batteries perform poorly in cold ambient temperatures. I found very difficult starting in temperatures of 45 degrees. This is because cold temperatures cause a lot of internal resistance, which causes lower currents to be delivered to the starter motor when that current is needed for starting. So I learned you're supposed to turn on your ignition and let your headlight and other equipment draw power, which warms the battery. Later on in this video, I'll show you some footage that I took uh, just this morning of me trying to start my motorcycle with this lithium battery in 45 degree temperatures. Spoiler alert, it took about eight minutes to get it started. Lithium iron phosphate batteries definitely require a smart charger made specifically for lithium batteries. There are different charging programs for lithium batteries compared to lead acid batteries. The lead acid battery programming includes a reconditioning cycle, which is to desulfate the plates in the battery. During this stage, voltages in excess of 15 volts are delivered to the battery. These high voltage pulses will either damage your lithium battery or trigger protective mode in the internal circuitry on the lithium battery. I learned that a lithium iron phosphate battery sold in the United States for sure will have a BMS or battery management system, mostly for liability reasons to prevent a fire. This is some protective circuitry inside the battery case that will prevent a damaged battery from being charged and this was probably a factor in my battery issue. If you live elsewhere, you definitely don't want to buy a lithium motorcycle battery that does not have a BMS. The discharge profile for a lithium battery is different from that of a lead acid battery. The lithium battery has resting voltage of around 13.2 volts. This voltage can remain constant until about 90% of the power is drained from the battery. So you should get consistent cranking power. With a lead acid battery, the power drops steadily until discharge, so the cranking power quickly drops off. But the kicker is, if the voltage of the lithium battery drops much below 10 volts, the BMS circuitry will put the battery in protective mode and prevent the battery from being charged again, even with a lithium charger. I think this is what happened to my battery. I should have checked the battery voltage after hitting the starter button, as I suspect it would have dropped to zero, either from high discharge or going into protective mode from the BMS circuit. The only way to recover a battery like this would be to have a lithium charger that had a BMS reset feature. And it appears that even the new lithium battery chargers sold by Harley-Davidson don't have a BMS reset feature either, as far as I can tell. I did a lot of research, and uh, it's, it's pretty clear that this is the case. So I started looking online at the Optimate website. Note that I have no affiliation with this company, aside from having bought chargers from them in the past. I finally figured out that you can buy smart chargers for either lead-acid batteries or lithium batteries. You can buy a charger for both. They call these Duo, or some manufacturers call them Dual Chargers. But you want to confirm that they can handle both types of batteries. Optimate only offered one dedicated lithium charger that had a BMS reset, and there was no dual charger option that had a BMS reset feature. 
So going forward, I'm going to have to buy this Optimate 4S charger, which is for lithium batteries only, but it does have the reset feature. The list price for this charger is 70 bucks. I suspect that my local Harley dealer did not have a lithium charger with a BMS reset, so my lithium battery was given up for dead. I later confirmed this with a Harley dealer that I called uh, at a different location that they don't have any lithium chargers with a BMS reset. As you can see, these lithium chargers are rather complicated, and I did not receive any kind of paperwork when I got this lithium battery from my Harley dealer. And I think this is probably the case with the other Harley customers that had problems. I suspect that the apparently high failure rate of the Harley-Davidson branded lithium batteries are due to five main causes, or a combination of these causes. One, there's some type of manufacturing defect with these batteries. Two, people are not being given proper operating and maintenance instruction for these lithium batteries, which was my experience. Three, people may not have the appropriate type of battery charger for a lithium battery. And again, like me, their motorcycle charging system may not operate at the 14 plus volts that is needed to properly recharge a lithium battery. And finally, five, if they do have a lithium battery charger, they probably don't have one with a BMS reset feature. Now it's about a 50 degree day. So the starting procedure for these is that you're supposed to let them warm up for uh, couple of minutes. So I'm going to turn the ignition on. I'm going to wait a couple of minutes here. Now the voltage has dropped down a little bit as you might expect because I've got a little bit of load here. So we're just going to wait. All right, so let's give it a go here. I'm gonna wait until I didn't want to start. Okay, so I'm about at the point where I was before I put the ignition on, so let's hit it one more time. dropped way down there. I don't want to just keep cranking, cranking, cranking here. It's not good for the starter motor and it's not great for the battery, I don't think. Alright, try it one more time here. Nope. But uh, you can see I'm six minutes into trying to start this bike getting more wear and tear on my starter as a, as a result and it's not starting. Let's try it again here. Another big important thing to keep in mind is that you should never jump start a motorcycle with a lithium battery from a vehicle that is running. If you do ever want to jump start a motorcycle with a lithium battery there's a lot of detailed procedures that you want to follow. I found this website listing these procedures. I put a link to this site uh, in the description for this video. So this may have you wondering what are the advantages of a lithium motorcycle battery. I'll tell you right off the top, I think there are way more disadvantages than advantages for an owner of a cruiser or touring motorcycle to use a lithium motorcycle battery, but let's go through it. First of all, a lithium battery will typically weigh about 10 pounds less than a lead acid battery. Second, the self discharge rate of a lithium battery is a lot lower, about 1% per month versus 1% per day for a lead acid battery. That means you should be recharging your lead acid battery about once a month if it's going to be sitting idle for an extended period of time. You'll have to recharge your lead acid battery more frequently if you've got parasitic draws through security and alarm systems. Also, you may need to recharge your lithium battery with an external charger periodically to rebalance the cells since the charging system on your bike may not have been designed for optimal operation with a lithium battery. But again, if you ride year round like I do, the hassle of warming up the lithium battery for several minutes was not something I was planning for. And even then, it might be really hard to start a bike with a lithium battery if the temperature is below 40 degrees Fahrenheit. As a result, I won't be riding my Roadster during the winter months very often. If you ride a sports bike and live in a warm climate, then it may be that a lithium battery would be a good value. So for now, I'll be getting the lithium charger with a special BMS reset feature. I'll also be color coding the SAE79 charging connectors to my motorcycle batteries as a reminder as to which charger to use for each of my motorcycles. I'll probably have to recharge my lithium battery periodically as it appears that my Roadster's output voltage 
to the battery is only about 13.8 volts, which is a little low for the uh, 14 to 14.6 volts that you should be having to properly charge a lithium battery. And I don't want to go to the complication and expense and introduce other variables by getting a new voltage regulator for a lithium battery. So you can see there's a lot to consider before purchasing a lithium motorcycle battery as a replacement to a lead acid battery. And I don't think the industry as a whole is doing a very good job of helping consumers either make an informed decision or for avoiding future problems with these batteries, which is fundamentally different than a lead acid battery. Well, that's what I have to say about lithium motorcycle batteries for now. Have any of you bought a lithium motorcycle battery? Did you know about the special requirements for maintenance and operation of a lithium motorcycle battery as compared to, say, a conventional lead acid battery? Please let me know your thoughts in the comments section, and please subscribe if you're new to my videos and like this kind of content. Thanks very much!